Hello, everyone. My name is Cynthia Henry, and I am the librarian for the College of Health and Human Sciences. Today, we're going to learn how to use the library resources, specifically for your class, Intro to Nutrition Research. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen so we can all see that. And we're already recording. So here we are on the main library website. Um, so the University Libraries is our library here. Um, it's the one with the big arches that is right next to the Student Union Building. But we have several libraries on campus. You can kind of see a few of those here. Um, and so all of those are in this one search. But also here in the University Libraries are um, physical items. Most of the, our physical items are in this one search. And even some of our electronic items are in this one search, as well as like databases or research um, guides that you may come across. So maybe you you forgot exactly what the name of a database is. You might be able to pull it up this way. Or if you um, know that I have a guide, and we'll look at that in just a second, um, for nutrition, then you could pull that up from here as well if you forgot how to get to it. So let's go ahead and do a quick search here. I'm going to go ahead and search for nutrition. Now, I know that's a broad topic. We're going to try to learn how to narrow it down, but um, this is a, a good search because it shows so many different things here. So this is a journal, so it's the nutrition journal not a journal article and i could look through each of the volumes and issues here if i got onto the online access here's a streaming video on nutrition and i could see it online access there too so i could watch that just like if i was watching a netflix video then we have a physical item here on nutrition and it tells you if it's available or checked out and then it tells you what library it's in. Like I was saying, we have several libraries in this search. So not only the University Libraries is here, but the Peters Family Legacy Library is here, the Architecture Library, the Southwest Collections, which is the archives for the library, uh, for tech, and the law libraries, all in this one search. So it tells you which building that book is in. It tells you what part of that building it is in located in so this is stacks fourth floor and then here's the call number so some people think they can take this ra784 um, upstairs here in the university library and find that item really you need this whole thing um, it, there's a lot of books up there and you really need the whole number to really get to the specific item that you're looking for if you get lost up there and have a hard time locating those things just come back downstairs and um, get me if you can find me or go back down to the ground floor and um, see if a student can help direct you. Um, that's what we're here for. All right, let's see if we can see anything else. Sometimes we have copies that have multiple. You could have online access or a physical item. And so I just thought we might see that. Let's go ahead and narrow into our search a little bit more. So now we can see here is a journal article specifically, and it's in the journal Preventative Medicine. So I'm going to click on this title so that we can see the record of this item. So we have the article at the top there, the title at the top, then the source line information. Um, and it tells us that that was from September of 2016, volume 90. And then this is our page range. Now, we used to have to all dig these out from different vendors down below here. There's only one option here, but sometimes you'll see a whole list of items of databases or collections that we have, and you would have to click on that and then find the right volume, uh, issue, page number, all that. But we implemented this new tool called LibKey, and it's been around about now uh, just a little bit over a year. And so anytime you see download the PDF, you can click on this and it'll automatically take you to the PDF. Or if you don't want to download it, you could read it right here. And if we had no full text in this area, then we could always use our request it link to uh, use our interlibrary loan option. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. But let's go ahead and follow this search through to the PDF. 
And so here's LibKey. That's the platform that is going to help you find all those materials. And here we are into um, the PDF itself. Now, some databases allow you to see the PDF um, or the HTML. I always encourage you to get the PDF because if you forgot to write down the uh, citation information, most of the time you could build it. Here is our source information. Here is the title to the item. Here's our authors. We would have our page numbers. When we start to scroll around, we could see that. Um, and you could build uh, your citation from most of that information there. The other thing about a PDF is most of the time it's going to have any charts, graphs, pictures, tables, things like that, that a lot of times the HTML doesn't. They're starting to get better in the HTML, but not every image is there. And so it's a lot easier for me to read um, the context of this table and see the table than to just kind of build that table in my head. So if I wanted to download this, I would want to make sure I'm using this download here, download or print, and um, not if I'm sitting in a frame, sometimes it will open into a frame and don't use that outside one, use the one for Adobe. Okay, I'm just going to get back into our item here. I'm going to close this, so I'm back into our results, and we could see several of these. But once we've opened the PDF, I think we're pretty good. We'll, we'll look at a database in just a second, too. And so I want to show that as well. So here on the library website here at Tech, if you see a double T, if you click on it, it will resolve you back to this page. That will happen throughout the site. So feel free to use that as a quick way to get back here. So since we're on this page, let's go ahead and talk about citation management tools like EndNote. Um, there are several different citation managers, um, and we'll look at a, a chart that kind of compares and contrasts. But the library pays for an EndNote account for you if you would like. To get to that, um, if you will come up here to the Research and Teaching um, menu head, and then come over here to the first column under Research Tools and to EndNote. We'll click on that. Now, if you want to download EndNote and put that on your computer, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and we pay for one copy for every student. And so you would sign in here and follow the instructions below. And then if you wanted to look at how to uh, use EndNote a little bit more, this EndNote online guide is here. And um, it has a handout and a PowerPoint and a video that will help you um, learn how to use this. Um, it usually takes a little bit of time to do some setup to get this going. But after all of that, um, you can um, use it. The nice thing about citation managers is that they keep all your citations in one place. And um, if you're really doing some serious research, that's nice because you don't have to remember where everything is. It's in one location. Um, most citation management tools will allow you to make some notes. EndNote does. You can highlight the PDFs once you've attached them to the citations if you want. And the nice thing about this one is EndNote has an online component and this desktop component that you can download and you can marry them together so that you can work either from the your laptop or your desktop, wherever, you know, at home or here at school and um, or just be directly online. So directly online, if I have run to like a conference and I bring my computer with me, I could still do the work in the online um, tool if I wanted to do that. So, for example, I've had to edit um, articles at a location and the deadline was um, going to be happening before I even returned home. So I was able to use my uh, citations from that location using the online tool. Quickly over here, I'm just going to click on this citation management solutions and it talks about the tools that you might be aware of in note. And so this is free from the library. Um, if you went to pay for it, it would cost you some monies, um, depending on if you have some discounts or not. I think it's about 100. If you have some student discounts, it might be a little bit cheaper. And we have the most current. And um, then the online, anybody can sign up for that if you just want to use the online. I think to me, the EndNote on my desktop is a little bit more useful to me. Um, but um, using these together are really good. 
Mendeley and Zotero are two other ones that we support, but these are both open source and anybody can download them and uh, use them. Mendeley usually pulls in data from the PDF um, and EndNote usually wants the data from a database. But you can pull in PDFs and see how it pulls in the data from there. It's not as useful as Mendeley is a lot more accurate. If you're coming from a different university, RefWorks might be uh, used to, but we don't support it. I just list it here so that, um, you know, people understand that somebody, somebody else is offering that tool. It is also a paid for product. So that's how you get some information on EndNote. I'm going to quickly go back to our double T. Then I thought we might look at our personal librarians. Um, so this is where we're going to find our nutritional subject specific information. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to scoot down to the College of Health and Human Sciences. And I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to move down to nutritional sciences. And here we are on the basic nutritional sciences page. You're more than welcome to use this. But this site here, if we just click on this, this is built for your class, the 4360 Intro to Nutrition Research. And so these databases are just a little bit more on target. Um, and we have some other materials here. We'll learn to look at uh, how to search for thesis and dissertations here at Tech. And then at some other places, we have some data sets here for you. This teaches you how to make Google Scholar work for you with the TTU library. And I will um, show you how to do that before we get done. And this is just a good kind of page where you can have everything in one spot. And so you could email me from here. You can schedule an appointment from um, here. So I would just click on that. These are 30 minute appointments. And you just pick a date that is convenient for you and then find a time that is convenient for you. And then you know that that is available because it's working with my calendar. So we're all set there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and get into a database to be searching. Let's use PubMed. So PubMed. Um, traditionally was um, put together by the National Library of Medicine. But um, in 2013, I think it was, um, federally funded research has to be posted publicly, and they've chosen PubMed as that. So not just medicine now here, or even just science. Social science is in here, um, and so you can find lots of different items in this search. But we're going to use it specifically for nutrition. It's one of the best for nutrition. So I'm just going to type in nutrition. So again, we can start to see that narrowing down. Well, I'm going to clear my um, filters. PubMed typically remembers what you left set. And so I'm just going to let that be neutral. So as you were searching the first time here, you would find it as well. So here we are. Um, we're just under um, a million, I guess, there. And um, Let's go ahead and add in another term. I'm going to look at taste as we were looking at before. And then um, we might even, and so now we're down to about 9,000, just a little over 9,000. And um, let's go ahead and look at receptors. I'm just going to type in taste receptor, nutrition. And so we're just trying to narrow down. I'm going to click enter so that it will run the search. We're down to 801. And we're still looking at all the years. So I might scoot down here and think about maybe the last five years, last 10 years. I'm going to go ahead and click um, last 10 years. So now we're just down to about 500. So that is pretty good. Um, and remember, everything in PubMed is peer reviewed. Um, anything that is peer reviewed, referee, jury, that's all the same terminology. And it just means that that um, journal article has been sent to a panel of experts in that field before it was published into those journals. So they just have a little bit more authority. So um, think about that as you're doing research. If you're in a different database, you need to make sure you're kind of marking peer reviewed. Um, but here in PubMed, you, you're good. All right, let's see if we can find something here. 
Um, I, I'm seeing some things that I think are good, but let's look at this one. It seems very interesting. Do gut microbes taste? I'm going to click on this so that I can be into the record. And let's talk about how PubMed organizes their information. So this is from um, the journal Nutrients. It's from 2021 in July. And here's our volume and issue. Um, and so our volume and issue is volume 13, issue 8. And so um, each journal is kind of published in different um, ways. They can be weekly, monthly, seasonally. So occasionally you might even see uh, a fall issue. So don't let that throw you or a winter issue. Um, but uh, that just kind of helps you know that if you see anything in parentheses, that's usually the uh, issue number, and it's usually butted up to the volume number. So be aware of that. Here's our DOI. Depending on your style of citation, um, you would use that in your citation. You can build a citation over here. I'm going to click on that, and you can see here it is. Here's the format that you can change it. So maybe you need APA, maybe you need MLA, or maybe you are you know, using uh, AMA as Amer American Medical Association and NLM is the National Library of Medicine. So even if you're using some other kind of style, you could pull one of these and um, at least have all the pieces. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and X that out so we're back on the record. Here's the title. Here's the authors. Here's the abstract. And then a lot of times you can see uh, the article here. So I guess it doesn't show it here. Um, but occasionally PubMed will, especially if it's um, full text in PubMed, um, instead of looking at it in another location, which we'll be looking at that in just a second. But you can see the abstract and the keywords and then the figures here and then similar articles to it. And if the article was here, it would just let you see the intro, all that kind of information, the findings, the methodology. But it doesn't look like this one is sitting here. We may find one in PubMed that is fully um, populated like that. But now that I'm looking for the PDF here, PubMed is kind of unique. It looks slightly different than most databases. Here is the download the PDF like we were seeing in the OneSearch search. Um, so this is the LibKey um, option. Um, we used to be using these, and you could still revert to these if you don't see these. But I would always, if you see this download the PDF, I would go with it. So I'm going to click on that. Here's the LibKey screen. And here we are in uh, this uh, PDF. And so you can see here is the journal title. Uh, here's the article title. Here's the authors. And as we start to look around, we could see um, the additional information if we needed to build a citation from it. And so then you can read it again. Uh, a lot of times, any charts, graphs, pictures, would not be in the HTML, it would only be in the PDF. Make sure you're pulling it down from here, either downloading or printing. And then we will go ahead and get back into our record. And then we can choose back. And now I'm back onto the page where all my searching was from PubMed. I'm going to clean up some windows real quick here. So we were looking at this one. And we have the PDF there. But let's go ahead and look at this one. It's a systematic review for biological mediators of fat taste and smell. So I could click on this and I would be in the record. We can look at all those things again. But we might actually see the item here. No, nope, it's still not here. But I can see there's an article link. Now I can look and see if the full text is over here. But I bet you if um, LibKey is just suggesting an article link, I'm not sure these would um, come up with a full text. So let's see what the article link ends up doing. 
So it is actually opened um, a PubMed page where this is the HTML of the screen, if you will. And so that is just the um, item on a website. Um, it does say, ooh, do we need a printer-friendly option? Let's see if that is the PDF. If not, it is not, but it, you can still get it in kind of a functional uh, screen, if you will. A little bit easier to read than the previous screen if you're going to save it and print it and stuff like that. Okay, so if I was to go ahead and print this, I can right click on the screen and click print. And then here, if I just wanted to change it to a PDF, I could just save it as a PDF and it would save the whole thing as a PDF, just like I've been saving all the other ones. And then I could save it to my computer or I could email it to myself, however you store your research. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And I'm going to get back into our um, record and then I'm going to click back. So we kind of saw if we see the PDF, if we see an article link, but what happens when we just see access options? We can get into the um, record of the item if we want, or we can see this option right here from the screen. I'm going to click on that. And it's our links resolver page that we see from the library, and we have the request it. I'm going to go ahead and open this and see, because we have no full text, Let's see if it will fill out the form for us, because a lot of times it will. It did not, because I think it's trying to, there's nothing here to fill out, is what the problem is. So we'll see that example again in, in just a second. But if we wanted to set up our interlibrary loan, we could do that by coming in here, clicking on our interlibrary loan um, ILL account here. If you've never signed into your interlibrary loan account, you could sign in here. Um, and then the next page, it would show you um, a, a page where you would set up your account. You would need to use your TTU email address and then fill in all the rest of the form. And then it would land on a page like this. And so these are the things that you can request. You can request a journal article or a book, um, all of these items. If you request something that can be delivered electronically, we can usually get that to you in about 48 hours. Um, I happen to be recording this on a Monday, and uh, then I would definitely be reading that on a Wednesday. Um, but if I put in a lot of requests on Friday afternoon, I probably will not be reading that the next until the next week. So think about that as you're doing a research. If you want to write a paper Sunday afternoon, then you may want to plan ahead and do your research early so that you would have all those materials to you. If it's a physical book, it usually we ask you to allow for about a week. So if that was coming from Austin, that might be two or three days, but if it really is really coming from the state of Oregon, it would um, probably be a week for you to get it. Once those items come in, they will send you an email to your TTU email address. And if you have, if you're able to see it re electronically received, then you would click in here. And then the PDF would be stored here where you could just open that and download it and print it, and save it, do whatever you want with it, just like you would if it was out of a database. Um, if it was a physical item, it would be checked out to you. I'm not sure I have something checked out to me. Oh, I do, I have a book. So then it, um, is listed here um, and it tells me the due date and we don't get to set that due date. The home library that sent it to us to share with you gets to set that um, due date. And so you can see this one, um, it was checked out to me in September 10th. So I have almost the whole semester, right? But sometimes they'll give you two weeks, sometimes they'll give you a month, sometimes they give you a couple of months. So um, just be aware of that. Um, you can also come in and renew it if you need help. Um, you can always ask us for help and we'd be happy to do that. Okay, so I'm going to get back into our database that we were looking in. And that's a little bit about how to find the materials once you find the record you want. So you can get the download, the PDF, you can look for the article, or you might have this access option. 
I hope everybody kind of uh, followed me on that. If you don't learn anything else from me, I hope you learned that. I think it would be the most helpful for you in the long run. So we kind of saw the 547. I wanted to be able to show you a few of these options. So I left it at that. But if I wanted to make this search a little bit more targeted, I could even make this phrase taste receptor a phrase by putting quotes around it and running that search. So now I have just nutrition as a broad term and then I have the phrase taste receptor set so that now it is running that as um, a phrase. And so that changes our results. Remember, um, do gut microbes taste was down in number four. So it's kind of readjusted what was relevant here. And now you can see that they're highlighting taste receptor here as we were not seeing that um, maybe earlier. And um, that got us down to 262 results. And what I really try to do is um, get that a little bit narrowed. So we have lots of full text. So I used to say often that it was around 100 would be a good search. But often, even this, I think, is not a bad search at 262. Um, because what is going to be most relevant will populate to the top. Of course, if I can add another term here to narrow down to be more specific to my research, that would be great. Um, and as you're looking at different uh, articles, if I get into this record, we could see the keywords here. And maybe if this was really on target for my research, maybe I really need to look at the word gut or gut microbiota or maybe taste function, depending on what I'm really um, looking for. So a lot of times uh, good articles will help you find good keywords to they use in your research as well. Okay, so that is a little bit about how to search in the big um, one search, how to search in PubMed. I'm going to get back on our page where we're having our class page. Uh, and let's talk about some of these other um, resources. CINAHL is a little bit more nursing um, focused, um, but also related to health. So I think uh, that would be a good nutrition place. Then Scopus and Web of Science are large science uh, databases. And then we talked about um, Foundation Directly Online is um, grant makers and how to um, this uh, kind of identifies what is being granted, who is making the grants, and what is being funded, really. And so that way you can see um, who is funding what. And then this is our nutritional databases. Um, and that will populate all the databases that we think would be useful for nutritional databases. But um, these are the more targeted ones. Then if we wanted to look at thesis and dissertations, we would want to click here, the TTU thesis and dissertations. So this is only going to look at um, TTU items, so things that have been published here at Tech. So we're going to let that populate. And it automatically brings up this um, search. And so you can just browse if you want. Um, but you can do by issue date, by author, by title, by subject, by department. I find the department one is probably the most useful. And then you can just start to narrow down. And I'm just going to put in nutrition. Usually you only have to do, uh, well, I'll go ahead and put the first three letters. So here you can see we have nutrition science. Is somebody just put nutrition science? And it's really nutritional sciences. So we can see we have a big population here. Now, at one point in the past, the department was called nutrition, hospitality, and retailing. So you can see these are older ones. And it looks like um, we have a comma here and not a comma here. And that's why it separated those two out. That Oxford comma is going to get us all, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to open this nutritional sciences. That is the most applicable one, the most current one. And so then it will populate the, the theses and dissertations from here. And then you can just look around and see what you uh, 
uh, want to find here. Um, if you know a name or a specific author or you wanted to just go by subject, you could click here and then we could look at sugar might be a good one. And then we can see quite a few things. Uh, the sugar trade, which is probably history, uh, physiological effect or analysis, or maybe just sugar. Or even we could do maybe feeding. We can see quite a different there. Feeding behavior. So you can look around. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back on our page here. Um, we have a big population at Texas Digital Library. Um, it's all of our ETDs through all of the higher institutions in Texas. So you, if you wanted to see something at A&M or something at UT, you could do that here. Um, and then this is dissertations and theses, and that's from ProQuest, and that is through the nation. So you could open either one of these and look at that. Um, anything that is in Texas could also be in dissertations and theses from ProQuest. It just depends on if that school has uh, given access to this large one. This is an older database. I'll open it and we can see it a little bit. It's a database that was built, um, one of the first databases, because uh, we were needing to try to manage dissertations and theses because Think about it, dissertations and theses are only published at the school that you have graduated from. Usually they're not published any other place unless you randomly, you know, publish a chapter out of that as a journal article or um, the whole book, but not most people don't do that. So um, let's see if we can find something on nutrition here. We'll just go real broad. And so you can see quite a few. And then it will tell you where's that coming from. And um, remember, all of these um, dissertations and theses are released if that um, university has allowed them to be um, indexed in a, in a database. Now, most uh, Universities are trying to do that now, but I do think uh, the um, California, University of California system is still not releasing there. So like then those are only published at that location and are only available in those libraries specifically. So you could just find this again here. We're looking at you can see the PDF, full text PDF. Preview that just allows you to see a little bit since these are the same. See, this one is a little bit, you know, if you didn't, if you weren't sure you wanted the whole 10 megabytes, you could just do the preview. So, this is going to look at an online view. This will actually download it to your um, device, computer, tablet, whatever you're using to search, phone. And so, you could do that. Again, you can narrow down here. Uh, update your date range if you wanted to, add some more terms here if you wanted to do that, and then find some items. Okay, I'm going to go back around here to see if there's anything else that we wanted to talk about. We talked about our interlibrary loan. The only other thing we have here is um, make Google Scholar work for you. I'll show you that in just a second. And then I'm going to publish this video here at the bottom of this page. So once you come to this page, you would see this recording here. And then we just have a few presentation tips on the side. So um, let me go ahead and get a new tab open. And I'm just going to get into Google Scholar. I'm going to do that just by Googling Google Scholar. I happen to be in Chrome. Of course, you can do this in anything. Um, I'm going to click on Google Scholar. I'm on the main page of Google Scholar now. And so to set this up for your um, uh, browser, you would just come over here and click on these three links here, three lines. And then we're going to look down here at the settings. And then on this page, we're going to be in the middle of this menu, library links. Sometimes people get lost on that. I'm just going to do that one more time. 
So the three lines, you're going to find the settings. You're going to find this page and you're going to be on the library links now. We're going to click on that and we'll be on this page. I have mine set up so you can see it's automatically already set, but we'll look at it as if we didn't. This Open World Cat is just a large catalog that most libraries participate in around the world, not just in the U.S. And um, if we own that item, it will redirect you back to our um, catalog. But then to set this up to work on yours, make sure you type Texas Tech, but nothing else. Click search. And then we want to make sure that Texas Tech University Libraries FT at TT Live is... Um, uh, check marks here. So yours may not have a check mark. Just make a check mark. You just have to do that by clicking on it. I'm not going to check mark the Health Science Center or the School of Law because I don't have privileges online at those. But I can still go into those libraries and use the materials. I just don't have access online. And I can click save. Now I can click save on any computer I want to. Maybe I've run home to the parents' house to for a weekend and I need to do a paper while I'm there. Maybe I'm there over Thanksgiving week and I need to do some big research before the end of the semester. So you can click save and leave this there because they will not have um, access to it um, unless they have your e-rater. And of course you would not share that. And so when I start to look in here, we were looking at uh, financial um, uh, stuff before. I'm just going to type in nutrition, and then we'll narrow down again. Um, I'm going to do the taste and see here. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it at this, even though we have been talking about receptor, because I just really want us to see this over here. So I'm looking for this FT at TT Live. So instead of looking here and clicking on the title and opening the record, I'm not sure where this is coming from, but I know this is a safe link. It is coming from the library, and I know that that will help me find the full text, and it will be something that is safe to click on and not cause a virus on my individual computer or device. Now, you may see some of these and know where they're coming from, like Science Direct, I know that's a vendor. I don't know where this is coming from, so I would definitely not uh, click on that. Maybe people know this organization, but I'm not aware of it. So what I would want to do is use this FT at TTU Lib. That is our links resolver. We're right back in the library website. I could use our PDF that we've been using at the top. I could request it if there was no full text. So I could see all of that information. One thing you need to know about Google Scholar, it doesn't populate to a new window like we've been seeing with the databases. So I have to click back and now I'm back on my results list. And let's see if we can find one that doesn't have the full text. And sometimes this page to me is a little overwhelming. You can see the title at the top and then you can see the journal and usually the year and these are the authors. If there's not something that you recognize as a journal. A lot of teams, that means it's a book and it will say a book out here in brackets like this HTML. So let's see. So that still looks like a journal title to, uh, to me. So uh, that just means that they have the HTML there not the full text in the PDF. So I would just use the full text over here. Let's see, I'm gonna look one more page over if we see anything that we don't have. Oh, like this is a good example. So we have the full text for this one, but we have no full text for this one. So sometimes if you look under this um, little two chevrons, that means more, and then you will see a little get it. And if I click on this little get it, it still redirects me back to the um, links resolver page at the library, but it's gonna indicate that we will not have that full text and that we can request it. And so I can open this request it and see if it's there. But there is, again, not a lot of information here. So I think that's why it's not filling it in. Let's see if we can see one that does fill that in a little bit better. Um, let me see if I can get us to resolve to that page a little bit easier. 
I don't know if we will ever. Oh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to pretend like there's not full text here. But if we had a page where we got to this, where we needed to request it with, there was no full text. If it's functioning well and has a lot of citation information, it will pull that in. And then I could adjust it if need be. Sometimes it doesn't get the journal title and you have to drop that in. And I usually just click back and see where the journal is coming from and then pull it over. And this actually has some kind of weird um, symbol. When I look over here, see, it doesn't like that semicolon. So maybe I'll just put the semicolon there. You know, try it. It's good. And so that's the more accurate title instead of that weird semicolon, the uh, symbol that was sitting there for instead of the semicolon. So then I could submit request. And then it would land here in my pending request. And then in about 48 hours, I would get that electronically. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get back on our Google Scholar here. And if anybody had any questions here, um, we could uh, narrow um, with a Pacific custom range. Or sometimes I just use whatever is listed here. So just since 2020, that would give you about four years. And you can see those information, uh, those results there. Okay, we covered a lot now. So we've covered how to use our databases, how to use our thesis and dissertations. Uh, we didn't cover the data sets, but you could easily do that. You could jump in here and look and see if there's any data that you needed. Um, and this is also from the Texas Digital Library um, that uh, is statewide. And so uh, that's a good place for you to store data if you need a place to store it or to look for other people's research. ICPSR is a large uh, repository of data. And then the government's data is sitting here. We knew how to do our make a make Google Scholar work for you and how to use our interlibrary loan, as well as make an appointment with me. If you have any questions, feel free to re email me or set up an appointment and we, I would be happy to meet with you. Thank you.